Hey everybody, Brian here from quantlabs.net. I uh, just wanted to give you a updated view of the Simulink model, um, which is uh, the original MATLAB uh, Bollinger Band function. Uh, I've also added a Fibonacci in there as well. Uh, this is partly a combination of the um, uh, entries uh, for um, the Super Karen Trader uh, strategy. Um, this part with the Fibonacci I'll show you in a minute. I've shown this in a past video with the Bollinger, so it's a combination of both of these, uh, Fibonacci and Bollinger. Um, this is just pure development or for use for development purposes and testing. I don't see my, myself really going into production with this, but if I ever do, hey, I'm not going to stop myself. But what you're looking at right now is just for, as I said, for uh, demonstration purposes. Okay, so let's go through it. So we have our input data, which is just 50 random numbers that represent a time series. We have our period standard deviation threshold uh, for triggers, and we have our uh, period set at 50. Each of these are separate um, blocks for input, like for parameters. This one's let in, um, loaded in by a mat file. So uh, let me just give you a brief rundown on the uh, Bollinger. This works 100% that I know. I've shown this before. You'll notice here in the um, cogen directive uh, is for cogeneration purposes. Um, but uh, I've shown this before, um, so I'm not going to look at that. Uh, but if you look at this one, so it's feeding in the prices and it's being fed into three uh, custom MATLAB functions. So we got, as I just showed you, the Bollinger the last price, which is just basically grabbing the last 50. It doesn't really do anything special, but this one's a new one. Um, all we're doing is we're feeding in this time series of the prices, calculate our minimum and a max. We don't really use uh, the minimum, we just use the max. Now this is just from learning from this video here about how to calculate uh, Fibonacci uh, tracement, retracement. And all we're doing is um, we take the maximum on the latest swing, which is really in the time series. And all we're doing is just calculating um, the Fibonacci numbers on the minimum and the maximum. So we're going to use the 25% and the 61.8% uh, and check out those thresholds, uh, which are supposedly Fibonacci numbers. So I, I could be doing this wrong, but this is how I'm doing it for now. As I said, it's for testing. So that's what we're doing, we're just grabbing the lower range and the uh, upper range by calculating the min and the max. Pretty simple stuff. So um, as you can tell, we have our outbound, uh, output um, uh, parameters here. So we're just calculating the uh, threshold on the 25% and the Fibonacci of 61.8%. Uh, so it's a min and max, so we're just using those bounds or uh, bands. And we just feed them into these relational operators, which are um, blocks. So they're really simple. Um, you just choose your operator, and uh, I had I had these as separate um, functions before, but uh, a person in a, pr a previous video said, "Why do you use the relational operators?" So that's what I'm doing. It's very simple. Um, so we have here our uh, two out. Well, it's really returning uh, parameters. The percent, as I said, for 25 and 61.8 percent. So we'll feed in the upper one, and then we'll take our price, our latest price, feed it into here. It's less than the upper band uh, we sell. Uh, if it's uh, higher, which goes in this one, we uh, buy. Okay. Now with the Bollinger, it's the same idea. We have upper um, feeding the price. If it's uh, if the price is greater than the uh, upper band, um, that's set at uh, 2, standard deviation 2, as I said earlier. Um, if it's greater, the price is greater than the upper band on the Bollinger, we buy. If it's uh, a com, um, lower, then we sell. Okay, all we really care about are buying um, um, triggers, because we're going to have to do it in another uh, piece of code, but this is just for uh, demonstration purposes, as I said. So what I did was, if we have both uh, the Fibonacci and the Bollinger are equal to true, um, we have a, a buy signal. Um, 
in this case they're both uh, selling me we sell but this this is just really dummy code here the dummy logic but this is this is really the, the good one for for the buying which is really the entry into the uh, market so we're gonna have uh, um, some new code we'll have to put into the generated code um, which I'm just about to show you and uh, there's a, a few things so let me just show you the generated code first um, to come under uh, code generation options now just for uh, de demonstrating purposes you don't have to choose this I've, I've included all the comments even the traceable simulating and state flow and all that um, I've also just went full uh, on all the comments just for your purposes on the uh, comments uh, so you can trace it back in the C code back to this uh, Simulink model here um, so we've got that uh, what am I looking for uh, code generation nope. I'll, I'll show that in a minute um, so we've got all we have no custom code put in yet I think we will at some point um, verification we just keep all this default and um, yeah he's come into here build um, also just so in the reporting just please notice that I put in code create code generation uh, report also got um, there's another one with uh, uh, web uh, yeah this one here generate model view web so once you build the code by here uh, to create either C or C++ obviously I'm using C um, what will happen is uh, what will happen is very cool um, so here's the report um, now this part I kind of like um, so what will happen is you get a view of the um, model this one obviously um, I've not run it but don't forget we have our little lamps here if you want to play with those um, I'll go green red buy sell um, back to our report and uh, you get a report and it's very cool because now I can go here and I'll bring up my MATLAB logic um, or if I want this okay this is all the MATLAB code right so that's what we know plus we've got um, our relational operators as you can tell here this is a cool re little report um, so there's that now once we co-generate into C this is what we get here okay so um, we get to go through all the different um, outports uh, imports um, subsystem stuff on the signals so you can use this report and I believe there's um, an HTML version of it I'll show you that in a minute um, so you can use this even without um, the MATLAB so you can help diagnose traceability um, so you can see um, if you want to see the equivalent of this is the MATLAB you can see the equivalent in C um, and, and I'll give you all your little triggers I find that's pretty cool um, the static code um, it's pretty solid this report and uh, let's get let me show you oh uh, one other thing I want to show you um, if you've been following me really close I could do this as a quiz but that would be right um, you can see here the targets notice I have the ERT the ERT uh, is the embedded uh, coder target I was usually using in the past the GRT and the user reason I'm using the embedded because it gives you a lot more options to play with as you can get here if you're using the uh, generic the GRT target you only get half of the options so you know it's better to use the main uh, to use the ERT the embedded so let me show you the actual files uh, so here's the actual files um, you'll find I'll upload this to for my all my members the one you want to look for is this one, the latest one, which is today, uh, September 15th. And you can just go through there. Um, there's nothing set up for the Microsoft Visual C, but this should work in Visual Studio. Um, 
And of course, I've mentioned about the uh, HTML. So you can go through the HTML itself um, and be able to uh, check it out. Okay, so this is the new model. This is the new generated uh, code, NC. So obviously, my next big step, if you've been following again close enough, um, what I will be doing is to embed um, in this actual code the calls to Redis to import the um, the input the inflow, which is the prices, which will be fed into these two functions, MATLAB, uh, Bollinger, and Fibonacci, and then obviously there's the cogeneration part, and then they go through their little logic, and then you'll get a buy signal, um, and then that will have to be uh, coded up um, and there's going to be some C code to take that as a signal and feed that into my uh, MySQL database. Uh, I've got a positions table. I've shown that in a previous uh, video and how that works. Um, and then on the other side, it'll be the Java. Uh, actually, there's going to be two separate Java processes. There's going to be one Java process that will feed uh, on the other side of Redis. Basically, it'll push the Redis data into um, this model. Um, so in that we'll have a Redis um, receiver, I guess you could call it, um, or a client that will receive uh, all that uh, fed and data from interactive brokers. So this little model will then uh, generate that buying signal. And then because we have to take that as a signal, insert it into a MySQL table called positions, and then there's gonna be a, a separate second Java process that will feed uh, and, 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 and see the orders that are open. So that process, that Java process will then uh, read in the market data live from interactive brokers and it will use some kind of trigger to exit and close out the open position. So that's what we're going to be doing. Um, as far as I know, the opening position or to close out with a super current trader, um, from what I understand, as long as you hit and you apply a stop loss of about 15%, that will be enough to close the the uh, the um, the uh, position. So um, that's all this this strategy is. It's just basically from what I've read and researched, and I'm just keeping it as simple as possible. Is basically you're using the Fed data, whatever asset you're watching. In this case, I've seen. Uh, SPY, SPX fed into this model and then it's using the Fibonacci, the Bollinger to generate a buy signal on these conditions, feed it into um, back into my database, my, my SQL and then have my, uh, the interactive brokers process watching those positions, watching on the entry price and once that stop loss hits 15%, um, just exit. That's the entire strategy. Um, and uh, once we get all that complete, I'll do a live uh, webinar on that and uh, we'll be good to go. All right, um, so we'll be piecing that all together. But again, this is the, the new uh, live uh, model in Simulink for, for, uh, for this Karen Super Trader uh, strategy or model. Okay, talk to you later.